Good evening. Welcome to St. Andrew the Apostle Catholic Church. My name is Jean Marie Anderson, and Paul Gaffney is the other reader. The presider today is Father John Durbin. He is assisted by Deacon Rich Mickle. Our Mass intention today is for Barbara Kunter. A very special welcome to those of you who joined us for Mass today. If you are joining us virtually, please know we look forward to the day that we can all be together again in this space. For those of you worshiping in person, please wear your mask over your nose and mouth for the entire duration of the Mass. In addition, please wait in the pews until an usher dismisses you for communion. Thanks for these efforts, which will prayerfully keep you, your family, and your fellow parishioners safe. The complete Holy Week schedule is available on the parish website or in the recent e-communication. Please remember to silence all electronic devices. As we begin our Palm Sunday celebration, please rise and turn to the back of the church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Today we gather together to herald with the whole church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery, that is, his passion, death, and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this ministry, mystery that he entered into his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and life. Amen. Amen. I would invite you now to hold up your branches that we might bless them. Almighty God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When Jesus and his disciples drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village opposite you, and immediately on entering it, you will find a colt tethered on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone should say to you, Why are you doing this? Reply, The master has need of it, and will send it back here at once. So they went off and found a colt tethered at a gate outside on the street, and they untied it. Some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They answered them just as Jesus had told them to, and they permitted them to do it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks over it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. Those preceding him, as well as those following, kept crying out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hosanna in the highest. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Dear brethren, like the crowds who acclaim Jesus in Jerusalem, let us go forth in peace.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross. Grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and come to share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, I have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, When he was in Bethany reclining at table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why has there been this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you will have with you always, and whenever you wish you can do good to them, but you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for burial. Amen. I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, what she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the pre preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, 
Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish. For the Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for him if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take this. This is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Again I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of heaven. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night, before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass by him. He said, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over him and, and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest. And all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. 
Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer court, then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are a Galilean. He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of? Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was then in prison along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do for them what he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Crucify. Pilate answered to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. Crucify. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them. And after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple and, weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to crucify him. They pressed into service a passerby, Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. 
With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, Aha, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross, that he may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elijah. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Please kneel. Please stand. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of the younger James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. When it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Amarathea, a distinguished member of the council, who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having bought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance to the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. In that place between wakefulness and dreams, I found myself in a room. There were no distinguishing features save for one wall covered with small index card files, like the ones there used to be in libraries that list titles by author and subject in alphabetical order. But these files, which stretched from floor to ceiling and seemingly endlessly in either direction, had very different headings. As I drew near the wall of files, the first to catch my attention was one that read, Girls I Have Liked. I opened it and began flipping through the cards. I quickly shut it, shocked to realize that I recognized every name written on every card. And without being told, I suddenly knew exactly where I was. This room, with its small files, was a catalog system of my entire life. Here were written the actions of my every moment, big and small, in a detail my memory could never have matched. A sense of both wonder and curiosity, coupled with horror, 
stirred within me as I began randomly opening files and exploring their content. Some brought joy and sweet memories, others a sense of shame and regret so intense that I looked back over my shoulder to see if anybody was watching. A file named Friends was next to one marked Friends I Have Betrayed. The titles ranged from the mundane to the outright, outright weird. Books I have read, lies I have told, comfort I have given, jokes I have laughed at. Some were almost hilarious in their exactness, things I've yelled at my siblings. Others I could not laugh at, things I have done in my anger, things I have muttered under my breath at my parents. I never ceased to be surprised by the contents. Often there were many more cards than I expected, sometimes fewer than I had hoped. I was overwhelmed by the sheer volume of the life I have lived. Could it be possible that I had the time in my 67 years to write each of these thousands or maybe even millions of cards? But each card confirmed this truth. Each was written in my own handwriting, signed by my own signature. When I pulled out the file marked time I have spent on the internet, I realized the files grew to contain their contents. The cards were packed tightly, and yet after two or three yards, I hadn't found the end of my file. I shut it, shamed, not so much by the quality of what I had watched, but bore by the vast amount of time I knew that I had wasted. Then I came to a file marked Lustful Thoughts. I felt a chill run through my body. I pulled the file out only an inch, not willing to test its size, and drew out a card. I shuddered at its detailed content. I felt sick to think that such a moment had been recorded. An almost animal rage rose within me. One thought dominated my mind. No one must ever see these cards. No one must ever see this room. I have to destroy it all. In an insane frenzy, I yanked the file out. Its size did not matter. I had to empty it and burn all the cards. But as I took it at the end and began pounding it on the floor, I could not dislodge a single card. I became desperate and pulled out a card, only to find it as strong as steel when I tried to tear it. Defeated, utterly helpless, I returned the file to its slot. I leaned my forehead against the wall and let out a long, self-pitying sigh. And then I saw it. The title read, People I Have Shared the Gospel With. The handle was brighter than all the others around it, newer, almost unused. I pulled on its handle, and a small box not more than three inches long fell into my hands. I could count the cards it contained on one hand. And then the tears began. I began to weep, sobs so deep that the hurt started in the pit of my stomach and shook through my entire body. I fell on my knees and cried. I cried out of shame, from the overwhelming shame of it all. The rows of file shelves swirled in my tear-filled eyes. No one must ever, ever know of this room. I must lock it up and throw away the key. But then as I pushed away the tears, I saw him. Oh, please, not him, not here, not now, anyone but Jesus. I watched helplessly as he began to open the files and read the cards. I could not bear to watch his response. And in the brief moments I could bear my, bring myself to look at his face I saw a sorrow far deeper than my own. He seemed to intuitively go to the worst boxes, 
Why did he have to read every one? Finally, he turned and looked at me from across the room. He looked at me with a deep compassion in his eyes. I dropped my head, covered my face with my hands, and began to cry again. He walked over and put his arm around me. He could have said so many things, but he spoke not a word. He just cried along with me. Then he got up and walked back to the wall of files. And starting at one end of the room, he began to sign his name over mine on each card. No, I shouted. All I could find to say was no, no, as I pulled the card from him. His name cannot be on these cards. But there it was, written in red so rich, so dark, so alive. The name of Jesus covered mine. It was written with his blood. He gently took the card back. He smiled a sad smile and began to sign the cards. I'll never understand how he did it so quickly, but the next instant it seemed I heard him close the last file and walk back to my side. He placed his hand on my shoulder and said, it is finished. I stood up and he led me out of the room. There was no lock on the door. There were still cards to be written. I have the chance to begin again. As we begin this most holy week of the year, this is what we are given, a chance to begin again. What a gift. What a gift. Amen. Amen. Let us now offer our petitions. That all disciples of Christ may work for the good of all people and shout Hosanna with our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of our nations will lead with wisdom and good counsel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit will experience God's love through the joy of friends, family, and healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who seek justice may find it in the transformation of hearts, minds, and institutions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, including Christopher Tucci, for whom the, and those affected by the coronavirus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Barbara Kutner, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all who have died, including Ronald Jenkins, Ed Deanna, Veronica Bucky, and Pat, Brian Patrick Fleming, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have given us infinitely more than we could ask for or even imagine. Hear our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that this, our sacrifice, may become acceptable to God, our loving Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice we may feel the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ the Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins. His resurrection has purchased our salvation. And so with angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, is without end we acclaim. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember your church, spread throughout the world, and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Luis Raphael, our Bishop, all clergy, religious, and all who seek you with sincere hearts. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. 
have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, Andrew, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your friends, I leave you peace. Peace is my gift to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Grant to us the peace, the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. of God, who takes away the sin of the world, how blessed are those called to share at the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Just a reminder that as we have every year, we take up a collection on Holy Thursday, 
and this year uh, it's designated for Oak City Cares. So the parish will match what we donate up to $10,000. So it might be one of the last acts of Lent and almsgiving you might want to consider. Uh, it's interesting that all the other Sundays of the year, the church says a collection, up is, a collection is taken up for the support of the parish and the poor. But the directive for Holy Thursday stands unique, and it says a collection is taken up for the poor, defining for us what a Eucharistic communi community does, washes feet and takes care of the poor. If you'll note, if you're coming to the Triduum or celebrating with us virtually, the liturgy is one liturgy over three days. We begin with the sign of the cross as usual on Holy Thursday evening, but we end in silence because the liturgy continues through the next day with the feast, the service of the Lord's passion and death. That liturgy both begins in silence and ends in silence, and then we begin around a fire, hopefully, on Saturday night for the Easter vigil. And then finally, at the end of that, the sign of the cross will be given to end the three-day celebration of the Triduum. So as much as possible, I'd encourage you to make that the heart and center of your week. Let us pray. As we are to be nourished with these gifts, we ask you, Lord, that just as through the death of your Son you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.